A few weeks ago, my favorite password manager, LastPass, decided to drop their free plan and allow you to only use the free plan on one device type. For example, you could use it only on mobile phones or computers. You could not use the same account between your cell phone and your computer without upgrading to a paid account, which made a lot of users leave the platform for competitors like Bitwarden or 1Password or Dashlane. Now, as you know, password managers are really helpful. Imagine using the same password for all your services. If your password gets leaked or the database of the website you are registered to get hacked, which happen all the time with big company names as well, then all your passwords are compromised. And I went in a journey to find the best alternative to LastPass that provides me the benefits of a password manager, like creating unique strong password for every website or every account I own, but also I wanted to be able to control the data and have it in premises or on my own server so that I have full control over my data. And that's why I found Bitwarden self-hosted solution. Now, before I started working with Bitwarden, I tested a different product called Passport, which is an open source password manager that worked very well, but it also had multiple deal breakers like not having a mobile app for Android or iOS. It required you to have double authentication, like unlocking the vault would be entering your master password once and then entering your master password again for every website password you want to use. And it also had a very complex password recovery procedure that you needed to do to access the same account, say, on different browsers. So I could not make a video on Passport because the product was not very reliable. It also had random Docker crashes, but Bitwarden seems to work a lot more stable than Passport. That's why we're going to experiment with Bitwarden in this video. Now comes to the implementation location. Bitwarden comes in Docker container stack. So it's a uh, multiple Docker containers together that make up the application. So you have the possibility to deploy Bitwarden stack on any Docker enabled machine. This could be in your home network or this could be on the cloud. If you are looking for a completely free solution. You do not want to pay for the cloud service. You can do it in your home computer and just use port forwarding to allow the access from the internet to your local machine. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to build it on AWS. This is going to allow me to show you the solution without exposing my own IP address. So in this case, we're just looking for any virtual machine that can run Docker. And I wouldn't recommend having anything below one CPU and one gigs of RAM. So it needs a little bit more beef, but not so much. So we're going to start on EC2. I'm just going to build a server from the beginning to show you how it works. If you are going to build it on your own AWS account or Azure or Google Cloud. This is an Ubuntu server, so this is the favorite distro you can use to run Docker containers. I'm just going to use this one. Now let's choose a size for this virtual machine. I could go with the free tier eligible, which is one CPU on one gig, but I also had issues in the past starting all these containers with this low memory. So I'm just going to save myself some time and go with the E2 small size because it's going to give me a little bit more RAM to play with. Now I'm going to leave all the instance details to the default setup. All I need to make sure or verify is that there is a public IP address because I want to make sure my password vault is accessible from everywhere, which is enabled in this case. And I just want to save myself some time using the user data, which is a feature that allow me to launch a script while the device first boots up. So this can be used for anything from installing application, creating files, modifying system files, and I'm going to paste this script, which is going to be in the description box or the first comment. And what this does is it's going to communicate with the machine using the bash shell, which is the shell in the DBM based distros. And it's going to install Docker for me. It's going to create a system group for Docker so that I can run Docker commands without having to boot sudo. And it will add my Ubuntu, which is the username in this distro to the Docker group. And it's just going to refresh the permission. So by doing this, I'm just saving myself some time in installing Docker right away so that once I load the machine for the first time, it should be already installed. I'm going to click next. 
Now for the hard disk, maybe we can just give it a little bit more, maybe 15 gigs. And we have to make sure that encryption is enabled because we're going to be storing all these sensitive files and sensitive configuration in a password manager. Encryption at rest is enabled for this specific hard disk. Once this is done, we can click next. We don't need any tags. We just want to make sure from our perspective, yes, we need to SSH to this device to be able to control it, but we also need web access. And the web access is used for two things. The first part will be verifying the certificate on the server, which uses board 80 or HTTP service, which is going to be this one. And then to access the Bitwarden itself is HTTPS, which is going to be this one. Then we have board 80 and 443 open, which should be good. Now we can review it. Let's also create a new key pair, which is for authentication against the server. I'll just call this Bitwarden, download it, and then launch. So I just opened the Bitwarden PEM file or the key pair file in the body gen, and I put a key phrase on it to encrypt the content of the private key. And then we're going to save the encrypted file. Let's call this one Bitwarden.ppk, and this will be our password to access the server. Once this is done, let's go back and grab the IP address. This is our instance here. And this is the public IP address of the service. Now, in order for HTTPS to work correctly and to be able to access the Bitwarden extension and the Android app, we have to make sure there is a proper DNS associated with this public IP address. So this can be your own domain. You could use something like dynamic DNS or some service that allow you to assign a DNS name to it so that the certificate would have the proper DNS name and would work. So in my case, I'm just going to use Route 53, use my own domain to assign this public IP address a DNS name. So I'm going to access Route 53. So this is ElasticCourse.net, domain name that I use for testing. And I'm going to create a new record. Let's call this one the vault. So this will be vault.elasticcourse.net. And this will be the public IP address of the Ubuntu server where I'm going to run the Docker containers for Bitwarden. So now I should be able to get a proper DNS and proper certificate for the server. So I'm going to open my body client. I'm going to use Ubuntu at vault.elasticcourse.net. Board 22 is the default. We're going to go to the SSH authentication method and just use the PPK file that we separated earlier. Now, as you see, I should be able to access the server. I put a password on it, so I'm be required to put the key phrase to unlock the private key, which is extra security measure. So now we should be good. Let's verify if Docker is running. So as you see, Docker-V is running. And also Docker-Compose is running, so the start script or the launch script helped me get this running right away without having to run it after the machine boots. So now we should be good. Let's start installing Bitwarden. We first need to create a user account for Bitwarden. And we're doing this because we want to separate our user account Ubuntu from the user account creating the containers. So I'm going to use add user Bitwarden. Ask me to create a password. And this password has to be secure because this now is allowing access to the server or a backdoor password access to the server. So we have to make sure we put a very strong password in here. And this will be different from your vault master password. This is just the password to the local account on the server running the Docker containers. I'm going to choose a complex password here. So once this is created, we're going to do the same thing we did with our Ubuntu user in the launch script. We're just going to add the user Bitwarden to the Docker group. And this way, Bitwarden can communicate with Docker without having to use sudo as well. And then we're going to create the directory, opt or optional slash Bitwarden. This is also part of the install script. Finally, we're just going to change the permission and change the ownership and the group membership to the Bitwarden for this directory. So now, all the prerequisite from having Docker, 
Docker Compose and user account added to Docker group and the directory with the correct permission and correct ownership. Now I like to verify also that the user has been added to the groups correctly. So I like to open the etsy slash group file and look for the Docker group. And as you see the Docker group in here it has the Ubuntu user and it has the Bitwarden user. So our group membership is correct. Now we're just going to install the one click installer, which is hosted on the Bitwarden website. And it just curls this file or the shell script to run the installation. And it gives it the execution permission so that we can run it. And all we need to do after this is just communicate with this file and give it the install instruction. So as you see, this is the installer. First, it's going to ask me for the domain name. So this is the DNS name I give to my server. Like I said, if you don't have a domain, you don't have to worry. You can use any dynamic DNS service as you don't have to put anything in the DNS side. All the certificate work is done on the server itself. So if I put this domain right here, it's going to ask me if I want to get a free certificate and it runs the Let's Encrypt free certificate generator and renewal process automatically. It's very convenient for us. Of course, I'm going to say yes. Now it's going to ask me for the admin email. So I'm just going to say abort at vault. Now, right now it's creating the certificate and it's allowing the server to communicate with the outside certificate authority. As you see in here, it said that the process was successful. Now it's installing the remaining of the component, but first it's asking me to generate an installation ID. So this is very simple. You don't need any registration or any account confirmation. We need to come here, Bitwarden slash host, just put your support email address and you're going to get generated serial number right away to use in the process. So I'm going to use the installation ID. And then the installation key. Now, in my case, everything went well. So I'm just going to start the containers using this command. Bitwarden shell start. And as you see, it's installing a lot of containers to make this application work from the database service to the back end to the front end Nginx to the admin to the single sign on. So every single component is running on its own container. And we have almost 12 of them in here such a hard work from Bitwarden and it's great that they are providing this code and this application free for personal use. So make sure you take advantage of this. And once everything is running, it's going to go through the certificate. As you can see in here, if the certificate is due for renewal, which is happen automatically every restart or every turn on for the server, it's going to take care of that for you. So you don't have to do any manual work. It's going to start creating some directories and start the containers. And this is the part where you're going to have issues. If you are using a low resource server, creating these 12 containers takes some beef and it's causing some lower servers to kind of crash. So I'm going to now join my server, HTTPS vault.elasticcourse.net. And let's see if we can get it to work. So as you can see, this is my Bitwarden. Let's create the first account. And I'm just going to give it a strong password because this is technically accessing all my saved passwords. Now, as you see, my main account was created. So now I'm running this locally on my server and it has uh, front end to access the service. Now let's just verify the certificate really quick on this. You notice the certificate was released by R3, which is part of the Let's Encrypt Certificate Authority, and it's short term, so it expires only on three months, but it automatically renewal, so you don't have to worry about all of that. So now as you see, once I logged in, this is my empty vault and it works exactly like the cloud based service. I can create items or password, logins, addresses. Let's say this is the access to 
last of course and your username will be test and the password will be one of these generated strong password and let's save this first login so now we have our first password you can also import and export from your own LastPass account the cloud-based Bitwarden account so now we have our vault we have a few passwords saved how do we access this vault from the browser extension or from the mobile app for example i'm going to start by the extension for google chrome i'm just going to add it like any extension now as you see in the extension the login by default will take you to the cloud-based service provided by bitwarden.com what you want to do before logging is to click the gear just choose the self-hosted environment so i'm going to use the dns name fully qualified domain name and just set this up as my server url so just like this to be in here so i'm just going to log in now with my account and as you see i have access to my privately hosted or self-hosted vault and this is my account right here you can see here the generated password has synced and it's now reading it through the extension we can also do the same using the android app i like to use the bluestacks emulator to run an android phone on my computer and test out if the application is working and the same thing you can do from the app just click the gear icon https vault.elasticcourse.net Now I can log in again, it's my own server. And as you can see, I was able to access the same from the mobile app. So this self-hosted platform seems to work very well. It's more reliable than Passport. It has the ability to, to integrate with the already good Bitwarden app on Android or iOS. All you need to do is click the icon and just change the server URL and you'll be able to access your own data. Now, as far as backups and database, this program will automatically back up the database every night while running, and it will be kept inside the server. You can restore to it at any point of time. Now, if you wanna take a full backup for the whole system or the whole virtual machine, you can take a snapshot using the cloud provider if you are using a cloud based or if you have it locally you can take a vmware snapshot or whatever application you are using you can just snapshot the whole machine as a secondary measure you can also experiment working with kubernetes or running this in a cluster setup but for the most part for a single user you could try to run it in a single host and test out if this solution is reliable for you that's how you install Bitwarden on Docker and self-host your own password manager. Thank you for watching.